Welcome to Beyond the Lab, a series by the Office of Career Development within the Biomedical Research, Education, and Training Department of the Vanderbilt University School of Medicine. I'm here today with Rob Lavieri, and he is from the Pharmacology Department. We're so excited to have you. Tell us about what you did here at Vanderbilt. Yeah, well, thanks. Thanks, Kate, for having me. So I did a, a PhD in the Department of Pharmacology. I actually had uh, two advisors, which was kind of a unique experience from the start. Uh, one was Craig Lindsley. Actually, he had just just come here, so that was really kind of a great opportunity to work with him right when he came here. Um, and also Alex Brown in the Department of Pharmacology as well. Okay, so what did you do? Yeah, so I really actually split the time about 50-50 between the two of them. Um, for the first couple of years of my dissertation work, uh, I did a bunch of medicinal chemistry uh, with Craig, um, specifically looking at um, inhibitors of phospholipase D, which is the enzyme that Alex's lab uh, focuses on, among other um, lipid modifying enzymes. And when I went and, and then kind of transitioned partway through to Alex's lab, that was more of a traditional biochemistry, pharmacology type uh, PhD experience. So protein expression, purification, cell biology, fun all that kind of stuff. So. Okay, so what do you do now? What, well, I guess, what did you do after you finished your graduate experience? Sure, so, um, I kind of knew really before I started graduate school that I wanted to probably eventually work um, at a company, probably a small company. Um, so I, I was lucky enough, there was a small company uh, here in town that was hiring someone right about the time that I finished. Um, so I did not do a traditional academic postdoc. I went um, straight to the small company that was actually commercializing a Vanderbilt um, invention that they had licensed the patents um, from the university for. And I was there for a little under two years um, in a role primarily doing R&D, um, but also some at a company that size, everyone does everything. So some sales and marketing. Um, I got to go over to Europe to kind of a big meeting, which is, which is pretty exciting. Um, and then basically about a little under two years into that, there was kind of the things weren't going perfectly well at the company. Uh, me personally, I kind of wanted to do kind of something different with my career. Um, so actually now, um, like I said, I always knew I wanted to work at a company. I'm back at Vanderbilt. So uh, different this time. Um, I'm actually a project manager over at Victor, which is Vanderbilt's Institute for Clinical and Translational Research. Um, and so I've been there for a little over a year now, and that's going really well. So Okay, so what do you do every day? Yeah, yeah. So I think a lot of people say this, but every day is different. And so I think probably it's helpful if I kind of give you a few examples or, or a snapshot. So, um, you know, some days could be just meetings nonstop all day, either in person, um, on the phone, you know, literally from eight or nine in the morning until four or five in the afternoon. Um, that's not usually the case, um, but there's usually almost never a day without some meetings. Um, but it really depends. I mean, sometimes of the year, um, if it's really kind of an intense grant season, I may be spending a lot of time with my door closed, um, writing sections of grants or helping people kind of pull together grants. Um, but in terms of the day-to-day -day existence of a project manager, and all those jobs are different, I should say, but at Victor, it really varies. I mean, it could be anything from what you would call more pure, actually, science or writing. I could be doing, you know, doing math at my desk. Other days, it's more trying to, to sort of chase people down to, to get, get a hold of them. If you need some piece of information you can't find anywhere else, so it's, it's really all over the place, I would, okay. I would say. And so what are your personal skills that make you a good fit for being a project manager? Yeah, well, I don't, I don't know if I'm a good project <laughs> manager, but, <laughs> but um, I, I, think, uh, I think it's a, a personality thing. I mean, I think I'm half serious, but if your sock drawer is really organized, that's a great feature of someone. No, I, I think um, just having a real, just an, a mindset, and I think a lot of scientists are this way, of sort of perfectionism, organization, um, everything sort of lined up, checklists, all that stuff. I will say, though, that that's probably also the toughest thing to get a handle on because in science, if, if you're doing it well, you know, there's um, repetition and sort of the definition or the standard of truth is, is, is very high. Um, and in sort of a business and operations world, um, you can't function that way because it takes too much time and you would never get anything done. So that's the biggest struggle I think that I faced. Um, and I think it's, it's gone okay, but that's not uncommon when people sort of transition to a more 
operations, business type role that, you know, there's rules of thumb, but people may tell you, you know, you should make decisions with say 60 to 70% of the information that you think you really need or you should have. And um, that can be really uncomfortable if you're used to kind of knowing exactly what's going on, but, but the, you know, you're gonna be wrong, things aren't gonna work all the time. But in terms of just speed and throughput, I think that's um, something that you kind of learn as you go, so. Okay, you did not have a postdoc going into this right, job. Right. Do you feel like another, that a postdoc would be helpful for project management or do you think it'd be okay? Um, you know, I don't, so I think, I'll say two things that are gonna kind of sound the opposite. So in general, more in a project management role, more experience and more varied experience, I think is an asset because I'm fortunate enough to primarily work um, in disease or therapeutic areas and with resources and people where I know a lot of, so oncology, lipid biochemistry, a lot of these are things where I have you know, years of experience. However, um, it's a job where you often, you know, will be put into situations where you may not be the expert in the room, probably most of the time you're not. And so any additional scientific or other background I think is helpful. However, the kind of catch to that um, is that there's only so much time and you can't do everything. And so I, I think, I, I actually think that if possible, I think getting into a, a position that involves sort of operations, logistics, that type of thing, to me, I mean, in, in some ways, it's almost like a real world business school degree and working at a small company. So I think for me, at least, those experiences have, have worked out really well. But there's a huge element of luck in all of this. I mean, any... My, the first job that I had was very, very lucky that it happened to be open at the time and I was there and all that. And, and even this job, I basically, I just applied online and I didn't realize that there were quite a few people who I'd maybe gone to grad school with a friend of a friend or something like that who worked there. And so actually when I went to interview, I knew two of the three people kind of on the panel interviewing me, um, which, which was a nice surprise actually. So. Yeah. <laughs> so that is a form of networking, right? Knowing these, knowing these folks sort of in your everyday life. Yeah. Yeah. Are there other strategies that you use to network? Yeah, so I think um, I don't, uh, I don't, you know, I know some people kind of have to force themselves to kind of go out there and, and talk to people. To be honest, to me, I, I don't see too much of, of a division between sort of everyday life and, and networking. I think the only thing I might mention there is that I always try very hard to to do what I can to help other people because and it's not, so it's not, it's not pure altruism and it's not pure self-interest either. But I think, you know, the point I'm trying to, to make is that you just never know when you're going to find yourself needing a job or wanting a new job or whatever it may be. And um, it's, it certainly seems to go much better if you have, if you have a lot of people who you've helped when they need help, um, there's kind of some reciprocity there. And so I think that that just makes it a lot easier and more natural because, you know, if, if you just don't talk to people for years and you end up giving them a phone call and say, hey, I really need your help, that's a lot harder of a conversation than if you've helped them along the way. So I think it's really just kind of a, I look at it as a natural give and take and not really like a forced kind of thing. So. Okay, good. That's helpful. So if a current graduate student or postdoc would be interested in pursuing project management roles, what do they need to do to be a competitive candidate for those jobs? Yeah, so um, I'm trying to think. It's a bit of a unique job um, in the sense that if you were to ask me sort of like, what is that job? Like, what's the job description? The halfway joking response I would give you is, well, you just do all the important stuff that nobody else wants to do that has to get done, right? Um, so basically, let me, let me back up and I'll kind of describe maybe the bigger picture of what you have to do and then how you might prepare to do that. So I think the easiest way to explain it is that it's the difference, and I think we all know this, that when you get a PhD, there's this big focus on individualism and kind of I'm, I own this project, all that kind of stuff. That's great, and that's, that's important. But the fact of the matter is that out sort of in the bigger picture, I mean, no one does anything by themselves, and it often takes, I mean, right now we're working on a multi-site clinical trial, just planning it to get the funding, and I mean, that takes dozens of people touch that by the time. And so my job is to make sure that all of those people know what we're trying to do, um, that they agree on what we're trying to do, that we're all like working towards the same goal. And I know that sounds sort of simplistic, but 
it's actually really hard because some of these people are very, very busy, hard to get out. There's all kinds of practical challenges. So a lot of it is are those practical things. And I, I find that actually, I, I like that because it's challenging. Um, and so that's a big component of it actually is really just, just getting things done and whatever whatever it takes to do that. I mean, I've heard examples of people hold, you know, holding a cell phone up to a surgeon's ear in an operating room and they're telling someone what they, I mean, so these, these crazy situations. But, you know, I think really just, just leading a project where there's um, more than just yourself. And so hopefully everyone at some point in graduate school has an experience, but the reason for that is, so one person, even if you work really hard, eight, 10, 12, 16 hours a day or something, there's just one person. Actually, like you, this, you can, this is very, very limited what one person can do. A team of two people or three people who work reasonably well together will beat that one person every single day. And so I think that's the, the ultimate goal is figuring out sort of personalities and, and relationships and how people work or, or don't work uh, together. And so really, I, I think any amount of experience you can get also working with other organizations. So if you have a collaborator, for example, at another institution or a nonprofit or a company or something, the, the legal agreements, all those sorts of things, learning how those flow and, and what holds things up and kind of the, the pain points of processes, that's really the kind of stuff that I think you know, helps you transition to a project management type job. Okay, great. So, so you've been in the job search and the career transition the past you know, few years. What are some of the... Twice. Twice. <laughs> What are some of the tips that you would give about doing the job search? Um, really, any job, but I mean, maybe to project management. Yeah. So, I mean, again, I think um, it's it's tough. Like, I, I was very lucky because, you know, my my graduate school time, I came to work for someone who had just come here from a company, and, and really, from the time Craig showed up, which was right before I came to when I left, his lab grew. I don't know more than exponentially. There were just went from a handful of people to 100 people or something. And so um, I benefited from that. You know, I think I worked very hard, but I also was in a very good environment that other people put in place for me. Um, and so that being said, you know, I had papers, fellowship, all, all this kind of stuff. My first job was pretty lucky. Um, I got that pretty, pretty quickly. Um, that was unusual. That's very unusual. My second job, um, where I am now, was more of the, I, I mean, I looked across tons of different, I was looking at medical science liaison type jobs. I think there's a, there's a video about those. Um, so I, I really, I mean, I talked with tons of people just doing sort of, just really research. I mean, not, I mean, I was looking for a job. It wasn't really a pressure situation. So I was kind of taking my time and trying to learn. But really, that's, that's my advice is that there's no shortcut to that. You have to do that. Like you have to go, and even if it's 10 minutes of someone's time or whatever it may be, um, you have to try to figure out sort of what's, what is their day-to-day -day existence life like? And is that something that I would love or hate or tolerate? Um, and so, you know, different strategies work, um, <laughs> use them all. I think it, it really depends on the context and the situation, but people said this to me you know, don't get discouraged. And when you're in the heat of it, that's like the last thing you want to hear. And, and it didn't, I didn't listen very well either. Um, but you honestly just, like, there is no secret. You just have to keep going. Like, that's, that is the answer. And, yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for having me.